So let me know if you can all see this. Can you see my screen right now? Yes. Okay, perfect. Well, just one other thing, I'm sorry, Jillian, I should have mentioned yeah. before we get started. For anyone who's not familiar, down at the bottom of your screen that you're looking at the Zoom session on, there's a, like a cloud bubble that says chat. If you click on that, you can send a chat message to me or to the entire group. So if you have any questions or you would like to know something, please send it through the chat because I'm not going to be able to see all of you while Jillian is doing her presentation. And I, would not, I don't want to miss something. So please feel free to use the chat feature. Also feel free to just dive in if you have a question too. Um, my presentation for Instagram is not really long because I'm hoping that you guys will have direct questions about your, your specific business that you're looking to use Instagram for. So, you know, shout out your question. No big deal. Interrupt me. That's fine. All right. So we're going to dive in. Um, I'm going to give you just an a very basic introduction to Instagram for business specifically. Okay. Let's start off. How many of you have an Instagram account and is it a personal account or a business account? I don't have either. You this don't have is Lisa. Either. Okay. It's a Sheila. I have a personal. You have a personal. Okay. I have one that I haven't activated um, okay. and I need to do this. So my uh, dog has a business account. I have a personal, but I'm a newbie, so I'm learning. Okay, great. My dog has an Instagram following. <laughs> he's so darn cute. I have a personal account, and I have accessed it one time. Okay, okay, got nice. it. I say ditto to that. <laughs> okay. Um, I have a business one, and I don't use it enough. I don't know how to use mine either. Okay, that's okay. We're going to keep things really, really basic today. Um, one thing I would suggest, if you do have an Instagram account on your phone, um, it's a mobile platform, so it's made to use on your mobile device. Um, if you do have it in front of you, that would be great because you can follow along with us and uh, learn how to access all the different features. So if you have it, um, grab your phone. If your phone's right, not by you, go ahead, grab it. I'll give you guys a second to catch up. Grab your phone, open Instagram, and just be ready to follow along with us. Katie is, she's sitting on the other end of the room so you guys don't get feedback, but she is going to share the screen on my phone at certain times throughout this. I'll end my screen share and she'll do a screen share. And she is going to walk you through um, all kinds of uh, places on Instagram that will that we'll learn. So um, just be ready for that and you can follow along. All right. So there are three types of Instagram accounts. So you can have a personal private account and you have to request to follow someone and someone has to request to follow you and you have to give them those permissions. So you would be a private account. You can also have a personal account that's a public account. That means people don't have to request to follow you. They can just hit the follow button and then they're looking at all of your posts. They can see everything that you put on Instagram. Then the third type of account, which if you're using Instagram for business, which is what we're talking about today, you need to have a business Instagram account. Um, just an FYI, if you are using a personal account, but you'd like to switch it to a business, um, Instagram does have that option for you. So um, if you're not using the right type of account, no big deal. You don't have to start a new one if you don't want to. You can just switch your account. Actually, for this presentation, I switched my personal Instagram to a business Instagram so I can show you the features. Uh, so those are the three types of accounts. Okay, so why are people on Instagram? Okay, brand awareness. So letting people know who you are, what you do. Influencer marketing. So using brand ambassadors to help you with your marketing. Lead generation. Um, oh, look, I did not add the... Guys, I didn't finish my presentation. That's really bad. Okay, so lead generation. You are trying to find people to go to your website, to sign up for your email marketing, all of that stuff. 
before I download this presentation and send it to you, I will fill in that bubble box. Sorry, guys. Um, okay, then community building. So a lot Instagram is all about community. So you're trying to build a community around your brand or your service. Um, and you're trying to attract people that would like your brand or service. So you're, you're designing a community. Um, and then there's also commerce and advertising. So you need to go in and you're trying to get people to go to your website and make purchases is what you're doing. Okay. These are the neighborhoods of Instagram. So these are the six major places you can go on Instagram and um, access content. So I'm going to just walk you through these and then Katie is going to screen share and hopefully the screen share works because technology, but um, we are going to go over all of those on the actual Instagram app. Okay. Let me move you guys' faces out of the way. Okay. So you have your main feed. So when you log into Instagram and you're on your home page, you'll have see single images, really short videos, um, a carousel of images that you can scroll through, uh, and they all include captions and hashtags and all of that. So that's your main feed. Then you have stories. So at the top of your Instagram, you'll see these round little bubbles. You can click on them and you can go through all of the stories and they only last for 24 hours and then they disappear. Then you have the discover tab, which is really popular because that's where people go to discover people and brands that they relate with and that they're interested in shopping with and all of those things. So using hashtags to be found on discover is really important for brands. Then you have Instagram live, which Katie and I were practicing this morning showing an Instagram live and we accidentally went live on my account. So that was fun, but you can go, you can go live on Instagram just like you can on Facebook. Uh, then you have IGTV, which is kind of Instagram's way of like, you know, fighting with YouTube over, you know, longer videos. So on Instagram, I believe you can only post a video that's 60 seconds and under. And then if you want anything over that, you have to post it on your IGTV. Uh, and then you have direct messages. So if someone doesn't want to publicly comment on your post and they want to have a direct conversation with you, they can message you just like on Messenger for Facebook. So those are the neighborhoods. Okay, now give us a brief moment. Well, I stop this screen share and Katie is going to start her screen share, okay? One second. Okay, hang on, I'm gonna stop my share. Okay. And then, yep, yeah, start broadcast. Oh, did you turn your microphone off? Okay, great. Okay, all right. Then you can, you can swipe up from the, oh no, there you go, yeah. Okay, so before Katie enters, uh, like starts to do really anything on Instagram, I'm just going to say this, that I can't control what, I, what you see on my feed, just like that. Um, it's swimsuit season. I follow a lot of, uh, people who work with fashion brands. Um, there's all sorts of things that we could possibly see on discover. So just know that if you see something inappropriate, I am super sorry, <laughs> but that is Instagram. And if you have an Instagram account, you also won't really be able to control what other people are posting, um, or you see on discover. So anyways, now that we have that. Okay, so let's explore Instagram a little bit. So let's go, actually, let's go back up to the top. So this is your main feed right here, okay? So as, as Katie scrolls down, these are all of the images and with captions that you can see on Instagram. So then let's go back up to the top. So then we talked about stories. So at the top, you see all those little round circles with people's faces on them. And they're all, every single person that I follow on my account who has an active story right now is up there. Um, do you want to just click on a random story? Let's watch a story. Okay. So this lady, she's a fashion blogger. Um, and you can click the middle of your screen with your finger and it will tap through all of the stories and things that she's sharing that day. 
these stories will only be available for 24 hours. Stories also don't have to be perfect images um, like people expect on your main feed. They, this is the place where you can be real and um, you know just show your everyday life. Okay, we'll get out of stories now. Okay, let's go to direct messages. See the little airplane in the upper right hand corner? You can click on that. And then these are all people that I have had direct conversations with. Okay, we can click out of that. Um, let's see, oh, let's go to my profile. Down at the bottom right hand corner, we'll click on my profile. You can scroll down and you can see these are all of my um, main feed posts that I have. Sorry, there's a lot of toddler content. Um, Okay, let's scroll back up to the top. So those are all the posts that I've posted in my main feed and they will be there forever unless I choose to like physically go in and delete them. Um, okay, so I switched my account to a business profile even though it's my account is definitely um, personal. Um, if Katie clicks on the insights button right there um, and then let's go to the audience because I think that is the most important insight. Okay, so now if you scroll down You'll be able to learn all kinds of things about your audience. You can learn their top locations, their age range. And Katie, if you stop at the age range, you can click on men and women too. So you can, you can look at all of your followers if you want to know the ages of women and the ages of men. Um, you can do that. Can you scroll down a little bit more? Um, the, the other really important thing about insights is knowing when your followers are online. So I can look and most of my followers are online between, I don't know, 9 p.m. That seems like the best time, 3 p.m. also on some days. And you can, you can do it by day as well because you know people who work nine to five jobs, um, maybe on Instagram at a different time during the weekdays versus on the weekends. So using this insight tab is really important. And we're gonna talk about all of this stuff further um, into my presentation, but I just want to give you guys, you know, like a- Jillian, a sorry, this is yeah. Ruth. Can you just, um, I'm sorry, can you just go back and show us how you got to insights? Absolutely. Okay, Thank you. So let's go back to our home feed and we'll go from there. Uh, can you, yep, yeah, perfect. Okay, so you're at the home feed. You just, hey, look, there's a local business. Um, so you're at the home screen. You're going to go to your profile, which is at the bottom right hand corner. There's a little picture. My profile picture is down there. And then when I'm in my profile, I can edit profile. I can look on any promotions that I'm running, which none right now, because I have a personal account really. Um, and then you can go to insights at that little insights tab. And when you click on that, you can, you have to have a business account. Yes, good point. Um, you have to have a business account to see insights. So if you are using a personal account, you're not uh -huh. going to that tab. Aha, uh -huh. okay, that was gonna be my question, thanks. Yeah. yeah, no problem. And you can also see your, you can see content, activity, and audience. Um, all of those things are really important um, when you're trying to like, market plan and like, what are you going to, what am I going to post? Who am I targeting? All that stuff. This is a really great feature. Okay. Let's go back to the, let's go home. Um, let's click on the heart at the bottom. The heart at the bottom of your screen is all of the activity that is happening on your Instagram account. So you can see who is following you. You can see who has yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, Denise, you started following me, I think. I think that's you under there, right? There we go. I got to move my, my people out of the way. So, we can follow her back. You want to, you can click that. Okay. So, I requested. Um, you can see who's commenting on your post. You can see who is um, liking your post. You can see memories from past. Um, Instagram posts that you've posted like over a year ago, all that stuff, any reminders, they're all going to be right here. Oh, and also if people request to follow you, if you have a private account, um, that'll be there too. So now let's do the discover tab, which is the magnifying glass at the bottom of your screen. You click here. This is discover. Again, I'm going to say, I literally don't know what's on here. So sorry if something bad pops up. 
Um, so you can go here to discover people and brands um, that you can relate with. Um, you can also search up at the top. You can search, um, you could search a hashtag, you could search for a specific account, um, all of those things. And by using hashtags, you will show up in the discover feed as well for other people to discover you, if, especially if you have a business account. Jillian. Um, yeah. Um, maybe this is off the topic and you're gonna talk about it, but how do you decide, are you creating hashtags? Or are you using hashtags that already exists or? We, I actually have a whole section about hashtags. Okay. So I, will save, I will save that question, but if, you, if my hashtag section doesn't answer your question, stop me then okay okay sounds good yeah um yeah so you can search a hashtag katie's searching dogs of instagram and the hashtag creates a little community so anybody who's used the hashtag dogs of instagram is gonna it's gonna show up on here um by most recent um i believe and no top and most recent yep okay so let's go back home Okay, so now we're back on our home feed. So let's say we want to add a photo to, uh, to my feed. Yep, I click the plus button. I pick a photo. Um, do you wanna just pick one of those people? No, scroll back up. Yep, yep. Okay, and then press next. And so then Instagram is gonna give you all of these um, filters and ways to edit your photos. Um, the bar is high on Instagram. Like do not post a grainy photo, don't post a yucky photo. Um, any photo that goes on your feed should be really good. So then you can choose, yep, you can edit whatever you want. And so then let's press next, Katie. And then this is where you can write your caption, you can tag people, you can add a location, um, you can post things to other accounts that you have connected as well. Um, can you go out of the caption just for one second? Just press okay. Um, you can also share it to your Facebook page. Um, I don't recommend that, but I'll get in get into that later. So that's how you would add a photo to your main feed. So now let's go, let's go back out of all this stuff. Let's discard this post and let's go cancel. And then let's scroll. No, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna do stories. So we see all the stories at the top that, that other people have posted. Well, how do you make your own story? Okay, let's swipe towards the right. And that's gonna bring you to stories. Okay, Katie, you're on live right now. Do not go live. <laughs> okay, go down at the bottom where it says live, create normal. So normal, um, if you just, you don't have to take a picture right now, but if you just press the button once, it will take a snapshot. If you hold down on that white button, it will actually make a video. Now, Instagram also has filters that you can add to your story while you're storying. So boom, Katie's skin just like, it's just glowing now from this filter. Um, do you wanna try like a few more? So see all these filters that she's going through? You can save filters that you love um, to your stories and then you can use them. Um, filters are fun, but it also, you know, Sometimes it doesn't show real life. <laughs> uh, sometimes I use a filter if I'm you know, still in my bathrobe in the morning and I haven't done my makeup or my hair, that's when I use a filter if I'm gonna you know, post a story or something like that. Um, you can take boomerangs, um, which I don't know, I guess the easiest way to explain this is your picture will just kind of go like back and back and forth kind of it does the same thing over and over again i wonder if you can take one while we're on here can you take a boomerang just move your head hold it down hold the the middle button down and yeah see boomerang <laughs> it just it just adds movement to your photo which can which can um attract like people's attention um if you go to the layout thing in the bottom as well Okay, the layout um, will just allow you to like add photos and videos in like different, yeah, different places. 
like a little collage basically. Okay, and then let's go to, oops, that's okay. Let's go, yep. And then let's go to super zoom. Um, let's, you wanna record one, Katie? I'm really pushing her today. Okay, hold down on that center button. And, oh, is it not gonna do it? Yeah, just cancel out of it if it won't let you. It's no big deal. Oh, it's still frozen on my screen. Mm -mm, it's frozen on my screen. Is it frozen on everybody else's screen or is it just mine? No, it's, it's frozen. frozen. It's frozen. Yeah. Oh, she thinks she stopped broadcasting. So what? Here, if you want to bring it over here, I'll try to. Technical difficulties, people. Hang on. <laughs> It's showing, at least it was in a horrible picture. <laughs> Let's see, I'm gonna stop share and then I'm just gonna go back in screen. Just as a quick one, Jillian, um, on yeah. the in between, there are a couple of questions, you know, like, can you show us the main screen again, how to find the, in oh, that was, that was back a little bit, but can we have two business accounts? How do we find you? There yeah. are a lot of Jillian Taylors. Um, I want a personal and business account. Is that possible? Yeah. Okay. So let's let's talk about that. Um, Instagram has really um, some cool features when it comes to that. So, Katie, go back to my profile at the bottom right hand corner. So then, if you click on my handle at the top that says Tailored Lee, I can access all of my other accounts that I'm associated with. So if you click on, you can click on Whitney Reith if you want to. So I also manage their Instagram account. So I can go to their account really quick, but then I can pop back to my personal account. So hit Whitney Reith again up there at the top. It's okay. And then hit Taylor Lee again. And then boom, I'm back here. So I can't remember how many accounts you can have at one time on a phone. There's a specific number, a quick Google search could tell you, um, but most people don't hit the limit. So you could have your personal account and like three business accounts if you're running three different businesses and you can access them all quickly on your phone and you don't have to log in and log out. As soon as you log in once, you can bounce from account to account to account, which is really cool. Does that answer those people's questions? Um, it answers one of them. So if they want to find you on on Instagram, they should look for tailored Lee. Yes. Okay. So you can, you can type in my, my handle. So Katie, let's search for you. Okay. Right. Let's go. So we're going to go to that search tab and then she can type in her handle. Um, and then she found her account right there. Did ever, that was kind of fast. Did everybody see that? You want me to do that again? Do that again. All right. Let's go home. So at the bottom of your screen, there's a little magnifying glass. You can click on that. And then you're gonna click into that search tab. Yep. And then you can type in their handle or whatever you're searching for. Um, you can also, Katie, go back one. Hit, there you go. And now you can click accounts at the top. So like type in your handle, yep and then click accounts. Yeah, so then it will only pull up accounts. It won't just pull up, it will, when you, t when you do a search, it will pull up Instagram posts, Instagram accounts, um, hashtags, all of those things. So if you're looking for just a profile of a person, you can click the profiles. Um, if you just wanna search out a hashtag, um, you can go to tags, all of that stuff. So that's how you would find me. And my account is a business account, so any of you can go in and follow me right now if you want to. So if, they, if you don't know what the person's handle is, if you just know their name and you're, you're looking to see if they're on there. Sometimes, they sometimes that works. So if you type in Katie, but do you, is your, um, try, try Kathleen though. Nope. Then you can see. Yeah. You can see Lady Kathleen. So you can see her account. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of harder. You can you can do that, but you definitely have to know what you're looking for. Um, especially if their profile picture, you can't see their face in it or hold on. Or you can just put in my daughter. 
So this Katie is searching for her. Yeah. So basically, actually, right. So can you, okay, you're in Katie's. So this is Katie's daughter, okay? So her handle is at the top. It's Sophie underscore Bragg, right? But as long as the place where her name is, is filled in, so that's under her profile picture, it says Sophie Bragg. So you're supposed to put in your actual name there. So if your name is there and your handle, you should be able to search for both. However, some people don't have their correct name in there as their profile name. So then you'll go to search them and then, yeah, you can't find them. Like Katie has Kathleen instead of Katie. So if I search Katie, it's not going to pop up. I have to search Kathleen. So it's easier to know someone's handle, I guess, in that situation. Gotcha. So um, there's another question from Regina. It says, if I yep. create a personal account and then I want to use my nonprofit organization's Instagram account, how would I do that? Yep. Same way we did it before. So if you, let's go back home, Katie. But does she have to be given administrative privileges by her, the organization? Yeah. Yep, you just need the name and the username and password and you'll log in one time and um, then it will allow you to log in for, you know, the rest of forever until a password gets changed and then it will bump you back and say, hey, you got to log in again. Um, but yeah, you'll be able to, so you can go in through your personal profile at the bottom right hand corner, Katie. And then again, you'll click on your handle at the top, tailoredly. And then you can bounce between those accounts and see at the bottom, there's an add an account button. You can, you can log into an existing account or create a brand new one. Um, that's how you do that. Okay. So there, Danielle, that kind of answers the question on how you add an additional business account to your phone app. Yeah. Um, Georgie wants to know what everyone's handle is so that we can follow each other. Yes. If your account's mm -hmm. private, you'll have to request um, to follow people. But yeah, if you, if you put your handles in the chat box, then people should be able to search them. Yeah. And if what I will do is I will save the chat from this session mm -hmm. and make sure that everyone gets a copy of it. So you don't have to worry about trying to go through the chat to figure out who, you know, what people are putting in. You'll receive that. Yep. Okay. Um, let's go back home. I think that I have toured just about every place on Instagram. Does anyone have? Oh yes, that's a good point. So to get, um, to refresh your feed, you just pull downwards and then that little, you know, ticker will come at the top and um, it will load all of the new feeds. Uh, I mean, all of the new posts. Uh, are there any other questions before I go out of this and kind of dive into my presentation? I see someone waving their hands. Oh, I think you're muted. Yeah, I'm not. No. Um, so if you, you say you can bounce between accounts, what if you have your personal account and then, for example, we share a business account so multiple people can post? So we want the password to be separate, but then you can't really bounce, you can't, right? Yeah, you can't have the password separate. You all have to have the same password is my understanding. Um, no, I mean be separate from personal and business. Oh yeah, that's okay. Your personal account will still have a separate password than your business account. When you click okay. that, when you click that add account button, it will just prompt you to use your business account or whatever account it is that login information, which is totally separate from your personal one or, you know, your other business accounts, totally separate. Yeah. But Got your, it. your business account will have the same password over, you know, that, that everyone who has access to it will use the same password. Okay. Yep. And then they'll just be able to add it to their um, phone so that they can look at it and control it as well. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Anyone else have any questions before we dive into the kind of like the algorithm portion of this? Well, Ruth had a question about hashtags, but you said that would be coming up, right? Yeah, I do have a whole section about hashtags. Okay, sorry. Yep. Oh, yeah, Katie makes a good point. Do you want to see how to like and comment on someone's post? Yes. All right. So let's go to, yeah, let's go to Katie's and let's go to her dog. And so you're gonna double tap the photo and it will bring a little heart up. 
And then, yeah, you can also touch the heart at the bottom of the photo as well. That's a good point. Um, but double tapping is just the easiest. And then if you hit the little, the little, hang on, go, can you go back one, one time? Um, if you had the little like speech bubble there that's down at the bottom of the photo, you can click on that and then you can comment and you can use emojis and hashtags, um, all of that stuff. And then all you have to do is hit post. And then I have commented on someone's Instagram photo. And that's how that's done. So that's pretty simple. Anything else you can think of? I think that's... You can save if you want to save it. Oh yeah, you can save a post if you really like it. And then it will be in your collection forever. Like if you're using something, it's like a Pinterest board almost, you know? Oh yes, you can pre press the direct message button underneath the photo and then you could send this photo to someone else and have like a conversation about it. Um, yeah, okay, let's, let's dive into the presentation and then there may be times that we want to go, yeah, you can stop screen share. And there might be times where we want to dive back in onto Katie's phone if you guys have some really specific questions, but let's, let's screen share back into. Okay, so we have a, we do have a question here, um, okay. Jillian, from right, Danielle. Okay. She said, if you post pictures to Facebook from your phone, you are agreeing to follow Facebook, agreeing to allow Facebook to access all your photos. Yeah. Facebook owns Instagram. Yep. Are there any privacy safeguards there to have only the pictures that she used for Instagram shared? Well, yeah, that Facebook is not going to go into your phone and steal all of your photos. No worries. They only... They technically, once you post a photo to Instagram or Facebook, then they, they own the rights to that. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the way it is on pretty much every social platform. So there's no way, there's no way around that. The only way around that is to not. <laughs> Any other questions? I'm going to do a, I'm going to screen share. So Danielle, did that answer your question? Oh, she said she asked because Google picks up, picks, Google picks picked up all her photos, even though she never installed the app. I think you have to give, you have to give permission some way. Um, so at some point you may have accidentally like clicked to permissions that maybe you didn't think so, but in order for any of these things, it always pops up like, do you, are you gonna grant access to this, yes or no? So she could go into her Google account and change that permission, couldn't she? Absolutely, absolutely. Yep, okay, I'm going to attempt to screen share again. Okay, everyone, tell me if you can see my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, so now that we've done a little tour of Instagram. Whoa, it just skipped two. Okay, so we're gonna dive in. We're gonna talk about like the algorithm and what you should be doing and how you should be doing it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is your handle. So when you're gonna choose the handle for your business account, you need to make sure it's the exact name of your business. Don't use any funny, you know, numbers or anything like that. That just makes it extremely difficult for a biz, uh, for a person who wants to follow you to find you on Instagram. So you want to make sure that your handle represents your business really well and doesn't use any like funky symbols or anything like that. All right. So Jillian, what yeah. if there are other Welch farms, just for example, because I know there's one out West. Yep. Uh, so my suggestion would not be to use a number. I would use like an underscore. So like Welch underscore farms uh, or of Maine of something like that. I wouldn't use like a weird number. Okay. But yep. you really say it should be your name. Yeah. It needs to be your business name or else people can't search you and they won't under, they won't understand the connection to your business really. Okay. Yep. Yeah. 
Okay. So your bio, when you create um, an Instagram account, you have 150 characters in a bio to tell people who you are, what you do, why they should be following you, something like that. But it definitely with 150 characters has to be like concise and straight to the point. Um, so that can take some work. Like you think that your bio might be easy to write, but writing something that's 150 characters that explains all of the things about your business actually should take some thought. So if you're interested in rewriting or writing your bio, I would suggest going to other accounts that are in kind of like the same field as you and check out their bios and see what they're writing and what they're doing. And you can probably base your bio off theirs. You don't have to completely rewrite the wheel, you know? All right. Let's see if it will let me. Okay. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the link in your bio. So you have your 150 characters where you're trying to tell people all about your business, but then the link in bio, this is super important to use. So you need to be actually, hang on. I'm going to ask a question. How many people have websites? I do Jillian, Lisa. Okay. Yes, that's good. Okay. I'm glad to see some hands go up with a website. So the link in your bio should be directing people driving that traffic back to your website or wherever you're selling your product or service. Like if you don't have a website, but you have an Etsy page, you could drive traffic back to that Etsy page. All right. So you want to always be driving traffic back to that. Um, when you make a story on Instagram, you can reference your link in bio and say, you know, if you want to check out this product more, um, click on the link in my bio. And then all they have to do is click on your profile picture in a story and it will boom, take them right to your account where they can read your bio and click the link in your bio as well. Um, even when you make a post on the actual feed that will be there forever, reference the link in your bio and give them a call to action to actually go to your account and click that link. Okay. So this is where you're driving your traffic all the time. Jillian, to go back one, you don't have to go back on the, on the presentation, but just a question from Georgie. Yep. So she created way down East Maine to celebrate our region and to use both for cottages and real estate. So I would not need two separate ones. I've had the handle for several years and was wondering if you think it's a bad or a good idea to keep it. I think that's fine. If that's the way you're running things to keep it all on one, that's totally fine. Just make sure that people understand all of the things that you offer way down East, you know, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it could def definitely work. Okay. So, um, here's a pro tip. So the Instagram pros that don't have 10,000 followers or 100,000 followers, so small businesses, Linktree, which I believe is free if you wanna start using it. So you can click on a link in the bio and then it will bring up a page that will have multiple links. So let's say you wanna drive traffic to your website but then you're also trying to drive traffic to your Etsy shop and you also want them to sign up for your newsletter. You can have a single link in your bio that will then give them the option to choose all of those. Um, okay, I'm gonna try to go out of my presentation and see if I can show you. Can you all still see my screen? Okay. Yes, we can. So this is Linktree, all right? And basically, I believe, yeah, sign up free. Yes, yeah, see, it's free. So that's a good tool. Um, and it will give you access to having multiple links in your bio, which is super helpful. I'm gonna show you a person who uses it. So um, this, she, this girl that I follow, she's like a home style blogger. But if you see the link in her bio right here, link tree, so I'm gonna click on it and see all the things that she wants me to go to. So I can follow her on Pinterest. She has a Poshmark closet, um, her TikTok, her Etsy shop, her like to know it, like all of those things are right there. 
um, and you only need one link in your bio to get people to all of those things. And any of you can use it for free. So I definitely would recommend that. Okay, now I'm gonna try to pop back to my presentation here, see if it will present from, yes, great, pick up where I left off. Okay, um, let's go to the next page. Okay, captions. Captions are really important, but the two first lines in your caption are the most important, all right? So when you're scrolling Instagram, generally speaking, you're going to see the first two lines of anyone's caption underneath their photo, and then you're gonna have to click see more or read more. And then the rest of their caption will drop down. Um, so when you're writing captions, they can be super long. I mean, I don't recommend writing an entire blog post underneath a picture, but your caption can be long, but you've got to capture people's attention in those first two lines so that they want to read the click and, they want to click read more. There we go. So the first two lines are super important. Now we're going to talk about three important things in a caption. So one, you want to be personal in your captions. Talk about your day, share a story, say something funny, you know, like just be, just be honest and open with people. People like that on Instagram. Okay. Number two, talk about what's in your photo. So if you're using Instagram for business, I'm really hoping that you're posting things that are relevant to your business and you're posting about your products or services that you are selling, okay? So you should be talking about what's in your photo. So don't just take a photo of a product, but then talk about your day. You can talk about your day, but also weave in how that product is, you know, is you're using it throughout your day or you know whatever it may be make sure you're talking about what's in the photo and the last important thing to do is tell your followers how you can shop how how can you buy or purchase what is in that photo even if it's a service you know how can i purchase your service make sure to tell them that and usually that's like if you want to you know join my community um or join my fitness community click the link in my bio and that will direct them to the place where they can purchase your product or service. So you want to make sure you're always doing those three things in your captions. Those are super important. Any questions about captions? Okay. I'm going to move forward. Okay. Pictures. We've, we talked about this a little bit, but the bar is super high for pictures on Instagram. So when you're picking a photo, um, you need to make sure it's really good, really good. You know, users will not interact and stop and look at your post if the picture is yucky, period. So when you're posting something um, on your feed, not as much stories. Stories, there's not the expectation where they need to be perfect, but the pictures on your feed need to be perfect and represent your brand at all times. So if you need to, if you're really going to do Instagram, you want to make sure that your phone camera is a halfway decent phone camera so that you're not taking blurry photos and you're able to take a snapshot with your phone and upload it. Um, those things are really important. Uh, I would also maybe suggest if you're nervous about photos, maybe go to YouTube and kind of look up some free trainings on how to take a really good um, cell phone photo for Instagram. There's all kinds of free resources out there that will help you better understand how to take a great photo that's going to catch people's eye on Instagram. So I would suggest that. Um, I've got a couple tips, I think, for photos. Okay. So you, when you go to a professional Instagrammer's face, uh, Instagram like profile, when you go to their profile, every picture is different, but every picture has the same look and feel to it. They use the same tones when they edit their photo. Or they might be warm, they might be cold, like cooler tones. So you wanna make sure while all of your photos are different and showing all these different products and services and what you're doing, your feed feels the same because eventually people will come to recognize your photo before they even realize it's from you, 
when they're scrolling because they will see like how your photos look and feel and you'll be able to recognize that. Like a lot of the beauty bloggers that I really enjoy following, I know it's their photo the second I scroll on top of it because I know the look and feel of their photos. Um, and really, really easy way to do that is Adobe Lightroom presets. Um, you can install Lightroom right on your cell phone. And um, you know what, after this is all done, if you guys want, I have Lightroom and presets on my phone and I could show you how they work. Um, I won't do it right now, uh, but I'm gonna show you where you can access those. So I'm gonna go out of my presentation again and I'm gonna jump into, so if you wanna get Lightroom, you can go on to lightroom.adobe.com and you can start a free trial um, and then you have to purchase from there, but it's not super expensive. They have really small bundles for small businesses. And if you're looking to purchase um, presets for pictures, you can go, my favorite place to go is Etsy, which is great because you're supporting other small businesses. And so do you see how each of these presets, um, look at this one that says home over here. They're very warm, like cozy tones. And then this one, white light, everything's bright and cool, you know? So if you think one of these tones like really fits your brand, then grab the presets and use those presets every single time you make a post. And they're not expensive. I mean, look at these, they're like $3 and 70 cents. It's a one-time purchase. You import them uh, into your Lightroom and boom, done. You got them forever. So it's a really cheap way to spruce up your feed. All right now I'm gonna to try to jump back into this. Hopefully it lets me present from here. So another question that's come yep. through Jillian is about yeah. how much time should we spend daily on a business Instagram account? That is a really great question. If you're not familiar with Instagram, you're gonna spend more time on it just because you're learning. Um, I actually have this really cool resource that I got from a training that I did um, that has like all of the things listed out that you should be doing every day on Instagram and according to them how much time it should take you. So I can I could probably pull that and send that out to the group when we're all done with this if you want me to. That would be great. Yeah. Can you, can you make a note for me, Jen? <laughs> like you did last time. That was great. Um... All right, so something that really, I think, differentiates Instagram from Facebook is interacting with others. And Facebook is moving in this direction, but Instagram has always been about community and interacting with others. And interacting with others on Instagram is actually a great way to get your account noticed by lots of people. So let's talk about it. Okay, so who do you interact with, right? Like if you just started a business Instagram, like who do you interact with? Okay, use that search bar and find accounts that are in the same industry as you, that you like, um, or maybe, you know, maybe you sell home decor. So find a blogger that like does home decor all the time, you know, and start commenting and liking their photos because you, when you see an Instagram photo, you can see how many comments are on there and people will start commenting back and forth to each other and have conversations. And if they see your business page commenting on photos that they also like, there's a good chance they're gonna click on your profile and follow you. So interacting with other accounts is a really great tool to get yourself noticed. Um, they don't even have to be in the state of Maine. They don't even have to be in the country. If it's in the same like industry as you, you can you know follow along with them and have conversations with with their followers and all that, and it's going to get you noticed. Um, when it comes to your account, you need to respond to every direct message and every comment that you get on photos. You can never leave a direct message unanswered and you can't leave a comment unanswered and you can't just comment like one word or two words. Like Instagram wants you to be genuine and give them like a comment that's like you're having a conversation back and forth. Okay. 
So you want to make sure that you're engaging with people. Instagram's all about engaging with people. Um, I follow a lot of like beauty bloggers, for instance. And so when they post a photo onto their feed, granted, these people have like hundreds of thousands of followers. They will literally take two hours of their day and just comment back to people that are commenting on their posts. And they're commenting all day long to keep interaction with them because that's going to make sure that their photo is top of mind on Instagram's algorithm as well. Um, and then also it just helps people might see that their friend has commented on that and things like that. So they're going to get followers, all of those things. So people that have less than 10,000 followers, are you going to spend two hours of your day um, interacting with people? Probably not. You won't have that many, but just know that you should never leave anything, you know, uncommented on, you know, you need to reply to people. Jillian, we have another question. Can you yeah. share a post? You know, or can she copy, can someone copy someone else's post to their feed? You can, but it's really not recommended by Instagram for businesses. Yeah. So, so I, can I, can I clarify that? Um, so I've had a business ask me to share their class schedule and I didn't know how to do it. Um, um, I actually wouldn't press share. I would make your own post. Um, I would take if they already have a visual created, um, yeah. save their visual from, you know, Facebook or wherever it is, and then repost it on your Instagram account and write your own caption Got it. Okay. and direct them to, maybe you put their link in your bio, um, and say, if you want to learn more about this, put this link, um, and put that link in your bio and then direct them to go, you know, click on that is what I would have them do. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. That helps. Yeah. No problem. Okay. Post timing. When are your followers online? That's when you need to be posting. Okay. So do you remember when at the beginning of this, we went into the insights tab and on that tab in the insights, I can tell when the peak time is for my followers being online, um, any given day of the week. So if you are posting once a day on your Instagram feed, and you decide that it's easiest for you to post at 8 a.m., but your followers aren't on until 9 a.m., at uh, 9 p.m., your post is going to be lost. They'll never see it. So it's important to schedule time so that you can post when your followers are online, okay? And again, I'm just directing you back to the Insights tool to do that. Okay, Instagram stories. Here today, gone tomorrow, right? All right, they're only there for 24 hours. So you need to be posting consistently. Like I, I go to Instagram stories every single day to watch the same people. And I, and I'm, I go there and I'm, I'm clicking through my stories waiting to find them because I know that they're posting every single day and I wanna watch them because I enjoy um, just hearing about their lives, all of that stuff. So you need, if you're going to Instagram story, you need to post consistently. Um, when someone watches your story, even if they're just tapping through and not listening to the whole story, you're going to show up higher in their feed just because Instagram has seen that they've, you've watched their story, even though they didn't watch the whole thing, they clicked through it. So that means they watched it and you'll be promoted in the algorithm. So posting consistently is really, really good. Post each hour of the day. Does that sound daunting to anyone? That sounds like a lot, right? Okay, so maybe you don't post each hour of the day, but you can post a story every day about what you're doing, all right? And then if, if you're posting each hour of the day, your story will stay closer to the, the front of the stories. So remember when we were on my Instagram homepage and you saw the little round circles at the top, if you can, you can drag those to the right and see all of the people's stories. Well, if you're posting consistently throughout the day, your stories are going to show up earlier. So when people click, you're going to be one of the first stories that people see when they click into stories. Jillian, another yeah. question. Is it possible to schedule a post for a later time? 
I think Instagram has actually done that now, but I have not used, I know the last time I was using like a scheduling tool, um, it was not integrated yet. There was some sort of like code that needed to be written um, in order for Instagram to do that because Instagram, remember, is very different from Facebook. It is a, it's basically a mobile only platform. Yes, you can reach it from your desktop, but you cannot access all the features. This is a mobile only platform. So I think you might be able to schedule ahead in things like Sprout Social and Hootsuite and all of those um, things, but I don't think that you can schedule something on your phone. I don't think so. I don't think so. Correct me if anybody knows if I'm wrong, but I really don't think so. I'll just make a note and we can take a look yeah. later. We can, we can take a look and make sure I'm right, but, um, or correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't think that you can schedule. Um, the other thing you wanna make sure you're doing in Instagram stories is sharing real life content you know stay a little bit professional but people are not expecting like the perfect photo like that's on your feed they're just seeing what you're doing throughout the day um share a mix of content so on your stories you can have photos videos boomerangs quotes like all kinds of things like you don't just have to you know turn the camera around and you be talking to stories the whole day you could be posting like various things. Like if you're having a sale for just 24 hours, you could post that, um, that and then it would disappear in 24 hours later. Um, if you are nervous about creating stories, I would suggest finding an account that consistently does a story every single day and just watching them, watch them, learn from them. What do they do? Take notes, all of that stuff. So yeah, Instagram stories are very important and actually, the numbers suggest that more people look at stories on Instagram than actually scroll their feed anymore. So you're seeing this massive switch to having stories that automatically play for them. And if they don't like it, they just tap and they can tap through and the next story will come and the next one and the next one and the next one versus scrolling your Instagram feed. The first place I go when I open my Instagram account is click on stories. I don't, I don't care what my people are posting on their feed quite as much. I care about stories. So you're seeing this shift and it's probably only going to continue to that. So you might think that stories aren't important. I beg to differ. Okay. So start thinking about stories and what you would use, how you would, how you would story, what you would story every single day. Oops. Got to click on this thing again. Um, okay. We, oh, we didn't show them this, Katie. We didn't show them this. We didn't show them highlights. Okay, we'll go back and do this at the end. But so if you have um, a question that people keep asking over and over and over again, and you find yourself answering it on stories all the time, you can actually save a highlight at the top of your personal profile. And it will, it will look like a little story bubble. It's a little round bubble just like the stories at the top of your home screen. However, these are just yours and they're highlights and they will stay there forever and people can tap through those. I will show you some highlights at the end of this. I totally forgot to show you that. All right, let's go to the next. Um, oh, also another really good tip is if you make a post on your feed, you can also share that post onto your stories and you can direct people to go to that post, read the post, and then hopefully they'll take the action from that post to click the link in your bio or whatever you're trying to get them to do. So share your post that's going on your feed forever on your story that will only be there for 24 hours and direct people back to that post. Okay, here's hashtags. If anybody has questions, please jump in. Um, hashtags are one of those things that are kind of, you know, hard to learn about and hard to understand. Okay. All right. What is a hashtag? It is a, basically a hyperlink that creates a community underneath it. So like hashtag dogs of Instagram, we looked up that one, right? So anybody who uses that hashtag, their photo is going to show up in that feed. So it's a little community around dogs of Instagram, right? 
So there are three major types of hashtags. So there's branded hashtags. Um, let's see, what's an example of a branded hashtag? Okay, when I was working for Machaya Savings Bank, we used hashtag exceptional, hashtag MSB rocks. I don't know if you've seen those before, but those are branded hashtags. And only people that were talking about Machaya Savings Bank basically were using those hashtags, all right? So then you have hashtags that are functional hashtags, um, which are similar to search engine optimization. Does anybody know what search engine optimization is? Great, there's a few people. If you don't know, Jen, aren't we having a training on search engine optimization? We are, in fact, that is going to be on Thursday, July 23rd. Okay, if you don't know what search engine optimization is and you have a website or you're thinking about a website, take that course. So search engine optimization, when you're thinking about that, there's all kinds of keywords that will direct people back to your website, right? So you wanna think about that with hashtags as well. So what keywords represent your brand and will direct people back to your business? And you can create hashtags around those as well. And then some people just come up with like crazy hashtags that are just for fun and they're not looking to actually create a community underneath them. Um, all right, let's jump ahead because Okay, if you don't use hashtags, your posts are basically invisible. They won't show up in the discover tab. Um, they're less likely for you, even the people you follow to see them. You need to use hashtags. For every Instagram post, you can use up to 30 hashtags per post. Um, if you look at people who professionally use Instagram for their business, they'll put five hashtags at the bottom of their caption when they post a photo, and then they will make a, an additional comment onto that post, and they'll place another 25 hashtags in that comment. A simple way to do this is use the notes app on your phone, okay? And you're going to have to type out every hashtag that you want to use all the time and put it on your phone. And then you can copy and paste. So you can copy and paste those five into your caption, and then you can copy and paste the other 25 into a comment so that you're not having to retype all of them. I will say that there is controversy on whether Instagram can recognize that you've copy and pasted those hashtags and will like push your posts down um, in their algorithm because you're just copy and pasting versus like actually typing it out. Um, there are articles that say, yes, that's true, and articles that say no, but if you're trying to save yourself time, copying and pasting is much easier. So just save those in your note, notes app. Um, use all three types of hashtags if you want to, um, and then research your tags. Don't just like randomly select hashtags. Research them. What are other people in your industry using? Um, all of those things. There's There's tons of really, really great blogs out there that you can read about like hashtag theory and um, your strategy with hashtags, all of that stuff. Um, if you do have a website and you're keeping up with your SEO, you can look at your work, your SEO words, like what, you know, what words are you using there and maybe use them as hashtags as well. That's a place to start. Um, but yeah, I would do some, I would do some research on hashtags before you just start randomly like plastering them everywhere. Jillian, on my phone, when I start, <clears throat> when I just put the hash, I type the hashtag, it shows me option, you know, it, it will show me all the hashtags I've used lately. Yes. They'll pop up right on that little bar yep. on my phone. So I can just tap them yep, and it puts them right in. Yep, absolutely. But we have a couple of other questions. Is this yep. a good time? Oh yeah, we can, we can break right now. Okay, so one is what capacity can we use if we're only using Instagram from a desktop or laptop? Yep. So Instagram. If you, I brought Instagram up on my computer here. So if you want to want me to share that screen after you get done, I can um, and you can just do a brief. Yeah, I actually I actually have Instagram up on mine right now. If oh I good, have. okay. So if you are only using Instagram from a desktop, I wouldn't recommend using Instagram. I, I'm definitely not trying to sound like 
uh, mean or anything <laughs> by saying that, but if it's not letting me, let's see, I gotta pull it down. Okay, here's Instagram. Can everybody still see my screen? Yes. Okay, so um, Instagram is a mobile platform, period. That's what it's made for. If you're not using it on a mobile device, you can't use it to its fullest potential and I just wouldn't waste my time on it. That seems like a really like quick and judgy answer, but that's my answer to that. Um, Instagram, I, you, you, can, you can post from your desktop, you can search, you can, you can answer direct messages, but this is a good resource to use if you're at your laptop but most of your interaction and everything you do should be happening on the mobile platform because that's where you can reach all of your followers. That's where you can access all, everything that Instagram has to offer. So I wouldn't waste my business time and effort from my desktop. Thank you. And then yeah. another question was, did Jillian suggest posting something from your feed to your stories? I may have misunderstood. No, uh, let's, okay, so post, yes. Feed two stories. Okay. Um, let me, I wonder if I can find someone who has like a recent post. We already went through. I wonder, oh, I'm just trying to find an example of it. I just I would have to find someone that has a recent post. Okay. Let me click on, I don't know. Okay, it just hopped out of the shower. I seriously feel. No, it's not going to, it's not going to let me because it's going to be, it's going to play them out loud. It'll be too loud. So I guess I can try to paint the picture for you verbally. It's not going to be as good as you seeing it, but okay. So I make this really amazing post on my feed and I want more people to see it. So what am I going to do? I'm going to share that post from my feed into my story. And I'm probably going to put like an emoji over the top of it so people can't see the whole post because the whole idea is you want them to go see that post, go read your caption, and then follow the action that you're telling them to take. Click the link in my bio so that you can purchase this. So sharing your feed post into your stories is just one way to get um, your posts more views, I guess. How do you do that? Um, you can do it when you go into the stories function, the stories function. Um, I can try to, yeah, do, we might be able to do that at the end. Sometimes they'll say, post a picture on their feed and then say, go to my stories to know more. To know more, yeah. More in depth. So that Maybe at the end we can try to do another screen share and show you how to do that. If not, I can 100% find a YouTube video for you guys on how to do that as well. So there was another question saying, yep. can you show us how to actually place slash use tags, hashtags? So maybe yeah. we could do that at the end at the same time. I actually am on Instagram right now. So, I mean, let's find, okay. So this girl, um, these Merrily Days. She is a fashion and home blogger, okay? So she made a post. You can, there's two pictures on her posts. She wrote her caption. See how the two lines show. I can press read more. Um, she's directing you on where to go. And she used, she only used one hashtag, which is hashtag dreaming. But then I wonder if she put any in the comments. Um, Sometimes she does, sometimes she doesn't. Nope, she didn't. Let's go to... So we just went and got some chick... No, I don't want to watch your stories. I want to watch, I want to go to your feed. There we go. All right. Does she have any? Let's see. Okay, let's click on this post. And she put all of her hashtags. So she made her post. She put all of her hashtags in a comment. See all these hashtags right here that she used? Mm -hmm. All right. That's she put all the hashtags in the comment so that it wouldn't take up her caption. It, I mean, as long as your hashtags are either in your caption or 
in a comment underneath the photo, they're going to end up on the discover page. Um, so she put all of her hashtags down here. Jillian. Yeah. So all that long list of hashtags yes. are who she follows, like her community, or those are all hers. Can you no. just clarify? So, so those are hashtags. So hashtags, you can follow a hashtag, but a hashtag is not an account. Okay. It's very different from an account. Um, okay. Hashtag creates a community. So if you, let's click on one of these. I don't know. Um, how you, hashtag how you home. Let's see where it takes us. Okay. So anyone who used hashtag how you home is going to show up here. So these are all going to be home decor accounts where they're selling home decor or they're showing people how to, you know, decorate their houses, whatever that may be. As you can see, there is, look, there's a ton of posts about this up here, right? You can follow that hashtag, but following that hashtag is going to be following anyone who posts with that hashtag. You're not following an account. So um, you, Jillian, you can yeah. create your own, but other people can then also use it. And yeah, then- that, And that's a good thing. That's how you get seen. Really using a branded hashtag, you, you, you would only use that if you're running like a, 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 a campaign about one little thing. Um, if you're trying to get your brand discovered, you're definitely want to go, going to want to use hashtags that are like the SEO hashtags that are going to be um, like words and phrases that other people in your industry are using as well. Okay, so for, real quick, just so I make sure I understand this, Jillian. Um, so like for the Blueberry Farm, but I also have rental cabins, I might use things like hashtag stay vacation, hashtag wild blueberries, hashtag uh, two nation vacation. Yep. Things like that. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah. You might use a hashtag about down East Maine, um, traveling, farming, all of those things. And you could go and look at other people who are kind of doing similar things to you. So other people that have like vacation rentals and other people that own a farm, check out their hashtags, look what they're using because you want their people to see your page too. And maybe their people will say, oh, look, this person has some nice vacation rentals as well. Maybe we'll come and stay here. So it's okay. all about, it's all about, you know, getting other people to see you. So it's not wrong to use hashtags that are showing up on somebody else's feed as long Absolutely. as they're not like branded like their name or something. Right. I mean, you don't want to use some other businesses branded hashtag probably, but yeah, you want to use the same hashtags as other people in your industry. 100%. Very Jane, can you type in wild, uh, hashtag wild blueberry just to see what, what that brings up? Sure. Oops. No and, and while you're doing that, so let's just use Lisa as an example. If she, how, do, how do you literally do that? Like if I wanted to add or create a community, do I just start using? More than likely, your hashtag community that you're thinking of has already been created. Yeah. So just join one or follow just join one. It. Just, yeah. you, can fo you can follow it, but then just start using it in the captions of your photos. Just start mm -hmm. using it. And that automatically enters you into that community of hashtag followers. So this is wild blueberries. It only has 53,000 posts, which might seem like a lot, but that's not a huge following. Um, and you can see all the posts about wild blueberries. And then the cool thing is it gives you related hashtags up here. So nature's candy, blueberries, um, GMO, blah, 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 like all these things. Um, yeah. So you can look, look into other hashtags that are related to them as well. Yeah. Blue. Yes. Um, look, hashtag wild blue. And then, so blueberry only has, uh, 12,000 but then you can see all of the wild blueberry posts here as well. See that? And so you wanna join this community, right? You wanna use hashtag wild blueberry so that other people can see you that are interested in blueberries, which apparently well, that- We, we might actually wanna even use a hashtag for Maine or like hashtag wild Maine blueberries or uh, Maine wild know. blueberries or something. Okay, wild. Because Maine is has its own marketing, right? Wild Maine blueberries only has two thousand. Probably not worth it. Okay. 
I mean, you can use it because you can have up to 30. So you can use it. You might capture a few people locally that are interested, but. but if more uh, of us start using it, wouldn't it grow maybe? Yeah, that's the hope. That's the hope. But it would take a whole lot of likes and, oh, I don't have a plug. Um, it would take a whole lot of likes and such to you know, get it out to millions of people. So you want to choose hashtags that also a lot of people are looking okay. at, viewing, following, using, all of that, all of that jazz. Yeah. So I created a hashtag just for fun that I use every time I post pictures of my dog and it's Kino Fur Baby. So yeah. I'm the only one who uses that. So if you act, if, you know, so there are 44 posts under that and they're all mine. Yep. So it's not something that a business would want to do because you're not going to get any kind of following. Exactly. I did it this because I have like relatives who like to see Kino and that kind of thing. Yeah. So. Um, the only reason that, that ha branded hashtags that nobody else are, is using is for like special campaigns that you're running. Um, I can, I can pull an article that would talk like more in depth, um, about that, uh, if you want me to, but yeah, there's only certain campaigns where that would work. Um, well, this is my personal account. Right. Yeah. But I mean, just for, for family business, kind of stuff, for, but know? for businesses as well, you can use branded hashtags and there is a place for them. But a lot of times you're trying to get noticed using hashtags and branded hashtags aren't going to get you noticed. Okay. We're going to jump back in over here. And then when you have a campaign hashtag, like hashtag found F O N D A T bracket, our store bracket, can you connect that to an account? How do you make the best use of a branded hashtag to promote your business? Um, I mean, that's a whole like offshoot in the hashtag theory, which um, if you guys are interested, more interested in hashtags, I mean, they are really important. Um, let me pull together some resources. Jen, write me a note and I will pull together like a little hashtag handbook thing for after this that I can send out to all of you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Another really weird thing that no one, no one would ever think of, right, is a banned hashtag, right? So some hashtags, actually, hang on, let's, let's roll this back. Okay, when you sign up for Instagram, Facebook, any, any social network, TikTok, all those things, they all have community standards, okay? And that gives them the right to delete or shadow ban or you know whatever they want to posts um, that don't meet their community standards. So if there is uh, a question of like nudity or something like that, um, Instagram can remove that post, right? So if someone is, you know, happily using hashtag wild blueberry, and then someone decides to start using hashtag wild blueberry, but also posting naked photos, then Instagram is going to ban that hashtag. So people can't follow it and people can't like search it and see it and all of those things because they don't want you seeing those photos that don't meet their community standards, right? Um, so I actually have an entire list of banned hashtags in 2020 that actually, hang on, I'm going to escape out of this and I'm going to go to right here. Okay. So they updated this in March of 2020 and it is a complete list of banned hashtags. I scroll down right here. Okay. So all of these hashtags and hashtags that you might not think like, oh, look, salt water is banned because you know why? I bet too many people are posting bikini photos that Instagram doesn't like. So now they have banned that hashtag. Single, shower, Skype, nap. No, snap. Snap for Snapchat. That, that one is banned uh valentine's day is banned all of those okay so there's there's like a whole there's a whole list of banned hashtags and these hashtags that are banned can change at any time any time so a lot of people um have even saying uh with the recent black lives matter um a lot of people are saying that instagram and all the social networks are shadow banning 
these hashtags that they're using as well. So these hashtags that will just start and pop up and become trending can suddenly get banned as well if people aren't using them correctly, like they ruin it for other people, right? So before you choose a hashtag, make sure it's not a banned hashtag. And I have a whole, this whole list for you and um, I will give it to you when this is all said and done and you can read all about banned hashtags and you can go through the list, um, but there's definitely hashtags that you wouldn't think would be on the list that are on the list that are banned. And by using them, your post isn't gonna be seen by anyone. And if it's something bad enough, Instagram might even completely dismantle your entire account and say, you're done, we don't want you here. Cause they have complete control to do that and there's nothing you can do. So be careful with what you post as well. Jillian, what is shadow banning? Uh, it's just like, 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 censoring some of the content. There's a lot of different definitions to that that people like to throw, but like it's, cen it's censoring the content that you see. Yeah, okay. So that is everything that I have for Instagram. Do you there was a couple things that we were gonna go back and do, right? Do you wanna show how if you use a hashtag and you click on the hashtag, you can see like if oh, you well, type in one Peloton, you get 185,000. Yeah, we did, we did that is. on uh, right here. We yes, did that right. right there on the screen. Does anybody else want to see? What, did, what else did we talk about that we wanted to see more of? There was a few things. There was um, posting the feed to the story. How do you actually okay. do that? That's a great question, you know, because I've never actually really done that because my account is technically been personal up until you know, last week. <laughs> so I'm sure I can figure it out though. Um, do you want me to unscreen share? Katie and I are going to try to screen share the phone really quick. Try. Okay. Hang on. I'm going to stop my share. Okay. Stop my share. Okay. Now you want to share. Yeah. Make sure the microphone's off. So we don't get feedback. Perfect. Okay. All right, so now let's go to Instagram. Uh, do we, do we do? Swipe up, swipe up, sorry. Okay. Yep. Okay. Swipe up and swipe we're gonna up. go to Instagram. My phone battery is gonna die. Yeah. You can switch to mine. Zoom has yeah. taken the life out of it. Okay, um, let's go to stories. So we're gonna swipe towards the right. Now, I don't know if there's an option in here to do that, or if I have to do it from the actual post, or if they're screenshotting it. You know, honestly, I, I, think, I think- They screenshot it and then- They may it screenshot it. it and put it on their, on their stories that way. Let me, let me find a tutorial on this. Someone that does this all the time has a tutorial that can show you that knows better than I do, okay? I'm going to do that. I'm going to search for a tutorial for you guys. Another question, Jillian. It says, yep. can you include, you know, band word as part of a hashtag? For example, date was on the list. Could you use the word date in a hashtag as, you know, as part of it? If it's yeah, no, right? it's not banning the word. It's banning a hashtag as a whole, right? So if, if, if date is the hashtag that's banned, that's the only thing that's banned. If you want to add like, Hashtag date night. That's a totally different hashtag. Totally different. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. No problem. Any anybody else have questions? I can answer questions like uh, specifically about your business. Um, any of those things. We still have a little bit of time. I have a question. Yeah. Um, how do you change your handle or your, um, Oh, great question. Let's go into settings. Uh, so let's go, you go down to your profile and then we're going to click edit profile right there. Yep. At the top, gotta go up to the top. edit profile. And then I'm guessing settings and let's see, I have not done I this in a very I, long time. Maybe yeah. account. Is it under account? Account, okay, language. I think what it's actually though? here. No, that's your story. No, Sorry, that's guys. Stories. Edit profile right there under the. Yeah, yeah, that's where we were in. Can you click that? <laughs> so now. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yep. 
So then you can change your username right there. You would just go there. And you and would delete um, and write in whatever you want. And then press done. Oh, oh, actually, look, it says there was a little notice in there. It can take, in most cases, you'll be able to change your username back to this for another 14 days. So if you, if you change your username and you hate it and you want to go back, um, you can, I guess. So that's, that's good to know. But yeah, that's how you change your username. Okay, and what about um, deleting an account? Oh, like an Instagram account. Jeepers, let's see. Uh, I've never had to do that. So Settings, no. and then scroll all the way down. Nope. Add account, about account, account, go into account, maybe. No. Hey, that's how you switch. Look, actually, that's, that's a good one. Look, switch to business account. So if you have a personal account and you want to switch it to a business account, you're going to do it in your settings right here. That's a good thing to know while we're here. But I don't know. There's no delete button in there. Go back. Um, okay, wait, go edit profile again. Page, uh, category, I don't know. I, honestly, I don't know. I've, I've never deleted an Instagram account. Profile only file information, no. Nope, no, not now. No, for Facebook, it's been security. Oh security. yeah, let's try security, great suggestion. Um, okay, whoops, let's go, yep, settings, mm -hmm. security, that's right. Emails, download data, mm -hmm. no, it doesn't look like there's anything in there. Mm -hmm. Privacy. I've added that as another note, Jillian, to find out how to delete yeah. an account. I'll find how to delete account. Honestly, I've never done it because I've never had to, but. Thank you. Oh, oh you're going to talk about highlights. I do remember that. Okay, so at the top of, so my profile is right here. And you can see all my feed things, but you also see these little circles, right? So if you click on the one that's like my babies, click on that one. Okay, so these are stories that I've taken of, my kids, but I wanted to save them so other people can see them all the time. So I saved them in a highlight. And so now I just have my favorite like highlights of my kids um, at the top of my page, as well as all the photos in my feed. <laughs> okay, you can you can X out. Um, and you can have as many different um, highlights as you want. Like some people have like, enough where they have to, you know, you just have to scroll to the right, like through a whole bunch of them. I only have three highlights on my account and then I have all of my pictures. Yeah, so that's what highlights are. Anybody else have any questions? You said something about don't, you don't recommend um, sharing onto Facebook. Yeah, yeah, okay, so Let's pretend we're gonna make a post, Katie. All right, we're gonna press the plus button at the bottom and we're gonna choose, oh, yeah, let's use that one. Okay, so then we're gonna press next. And then we're going to choose our filter, whatever it might be, and then press next. So right here, you're gonna write your caption. You're gonna tag your people. You're gonna add your location. You don't even have to worry about a caption. So then it says post to other accounts, okay? So you can choose to post the same image to all the other um, Instagram accounts that you have. But then below that, you can also choose to post it to Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. I don't recommend that, and here's why. So if you are using two social platforms. So let's say you're on Facebook and Instagram. Why would a user follow you if you're posting the same exact content on both pages? They only need to follow one page to get all the content they need. Your content should be different on each social network that you use, which adds a lot of time and work to, to you. So when you are choosing a social network, make sure you choose wisely and you know which networks are going to be the most useful to your business. So don't share your same Instagram post to Facebook. So there's what also a question about um, uploading your logo or photo to the round profile pic. Someone had yes. some difficulty with that. They want to know if there's any tips or tricks. Oh yeah, okay. Um, so you wanna, do you wanna hit the, the plus button? on my profile picture. Real quick, while you're setting this up, what if you're running a campaign or a sale or something? Could you then uh, 
switch uh, posts to the same social accounts, the same information? Nope, it should, it should be this. different. Okay. It should be different each time on each platform. Even if it's the same campaign material, it can be similar. It really should be different, basically. Um, okay, so now we're in our profile picture. Um, so, no, we're not, are we? I think I swiped over to stories. XO, press the plus button. Yep, it takes me there. Why is it taking you there? That's so weird. So you would either choose Okay, yeah, choose one. Yeah, cho let's choose a picture. Let's choose one of these people. Let's choose Chris, yeah, or someone. Okay, perfect. No, see, it's taking you into stories. Yeah, Let me try. Weird. Can I try it? Yeah. I'm going to. Okay, let's go down. I'm going to go like out of those things. No, I want to get it out of here. If I click. Hmm. Okay, I had to hold down on it a little bit. Okay. Um, so then change profile photo. Um, import from Facebook, take a photo, choose from library. That's probably what you would want to do. And then see how it's pulling up the circle. So, so you're going to want to make sure that you pick a photo that it's going to fit in that circle. So if it's your face, it's, you're going to want to move it around, zoom, all of that stuff to fit in the circle. Um, sometimes this is hard with logos. I don't have a logo on my phone that I can like easily show you how to do this. Um, my recommendation is using a service like Canva. You can type in Instagram profile picture and it will automatically like pull up the correct sizing for it, drop your logo on it, save that to your phone, then add your logo to it. But yeah, you don't want this to cut off parts of your logo. Definitely. So, so just as another FYI, we have a graphic design basics for business workshop coming up on June 25th. So yeah. keep that in mind too. I'm, I'm teaching the graphic design basics and I'm going to show you how to use a free platform, uh, Canva, and they have all kinds of free resources and pictures and graphics and stuff that you can use. And I'm going to be showing you guys how to use it um, for making photos and graphics and all that stuff for your social platforms and any other marketing materials that you might need. So what's that, that date again, Jillian? Uh, Jen has that. June 25th. And Jillian, you're Thanks. echoing again a little bit. So the phone is oh, I am. here. Yeah. Let me, let me slide the phone away. Is that better? Yep. Thank you. Okay. No problem. Um, if anyone is not signed up for local happenings from Sunrise County Economic Council, if you go to sunrisecounty.org down, you know, two thirds of the way down the page or whatever, it says sign up here for local happenings. Go ahead and sign up because all the workshops are listed in it, you know, with the dates. And then as they are, because they, we're doing one workshop a week until August 6th. Mm -hmm. So eat that, that week's workshop will be highlighted. The rest are all listed in there with the date so that you can see what's coming up and, you know, and, the, uh, the links in it with workshop descriptions will be live hopefully this week. So you can figure out what's, you know, where things are and how to get to it. Yeah. And all of these workshops, they build on one another too. So just like you have this question about the profile picture and it's probably, you know, your profile picture is probably getting cut off or something. You can come to this graphic design class and learn how to fix that problem. So all of these things kind of work together for websites and social media all of these things. Um, yeah. I see a question. There's no fee for attending, right? It's just like this. They're all free. Yep. Yeah. And they're, they're all being, the, the reason behind this, um, you know, basically is we're collaborating with Downey Security Regional Tourism and Maine PTAC, the Procurement Technical Assistance Center, to try to help businesses be able to expand their, their opportunities or their options while things have been so um, disrupted by COVID-19. So instead of waiting until we could get you into, the, into a room in the fall to do this training series, we figured now is the time that people really need to learn this stuff so that, you know, how can you pivot just a little bit and do business a little bit differently? And that's why this workshop is set to actually build, you know, each, each class building on the other so that by the end, if you go through the series, You'll have a pretty well-rounded idea of what your opportunities are. And even if you're not an expert, it doesn't matter because at least you have an idea of what you can do 
or what could be done for you. And the other piece is there is um, on the the survey that you'll get at the end of the session, you know, it asks if you'd like more information about these different things like government contracting, technical um, sources, sources of commercial financing and technical assistance for Washington County businesses, uh, marketing opportunities for tourism related businesses. Any of those that you answer yes to, I can hook, I can hook you up with a person who can help you with those things. So it's gone, it goes beyond sitting here looking at things on a screen to some live assistance that's free, you know, here in Washington County. And um, I'm also going to have, Jen has taken notes today and anything that I said that I will gather resources for you guys on, um, Jen will send me that list and I will gather resources and then she's going to send an email out to all of you that has all those resources on it. Um, and I'll also, you know, give my email um, out to all of you. And if you have questions, you can absolutely email me. That's no big deal. I'm happy to answer questions about various things that you might, you know, the Zoom call ends and you might be like, oh, I wish I had asked her this. Like, you'll have my email and you can ask me questions, okay? And the recordings are not on the website yet. We're meeting with the web designer on Monday to work on all of the logistics. This kind of this whole series got pushed through kind of in a hurry. So we're figuring things out as we go along. Um, so we did not have an opportunity to do that ahead of time or to set it up ahead of time. So as soon as they are live on the web, or not live, as soon as they're posted to the website, that will be out in local happenings as well to let people know that they're available. Jillian, I have a quick question. Yeah, go for it. So the Entrepreneurship Center in the program is obviously a program of Sunrise County Economic Council. And um, so I would envision, you know, it having its own Instagram account, like um, Family Futures Down East. Yep. How much would you recommend and how, I guess what would it look like if, you know, the Entrepreneurship Center is having an event, but we also want that to be on um, Sunrise County Economic Council's Instagram. Mm -hmm. Would it just be a matter of you have to go in and just post it individually to each or is there a way to yep. post it individually on each Instagram account? Um, and then I also would recommend making a Facebook event and Facebook has a really cool feature that you can add um, co-sponsors um, to the event. So let's say Sunrise County decides to put it on their page, but they can list the entrepreneurship center as the co-sponsor. So then the event will show up on both of your Facebook pages, but you only had to create it one time. Instagram is not really smart enough for that yet, but Facebook uh, is. So yeah. And then one other question, is there a way to get rid of ads? No. Um, okay. Yeah. Nope. You, uh, that's how Instagram is earning their money. If you can sign up for free and you never get an ad, why, why would they offer the service, right? Just like um, ads when you're watching videos on Facebook, uh, all that thing, companies like brands are paying big money uh, to Instagram, Facebook, whoever it is to place those ads there. So no, they're not gonna get rid of them. You can tell Instagram that you didn't like that ad. Like if you felt like, you know, it really, it didn't, you know, you, don't, you didn't agree with the product or you didn't like it and you ever wanted to see it again. You can say, I don't want to see that product again, but they're just going to fill it with a new product. But oh, you, can, you can do that if they're sending, giving you, showing your ads for things that you have absolutely no interest right. in. Right, yeah, exactly. Anybody else have questions? No questions. Okay, then I mean, I think we're ready to wrap up then, Jen. We're all done. Um, I'll collect resources and Jen will send them out in an email. And thank you all for coming today. And I hope I didn't scare you with all that Instagram is. I hope it was helpful. Um, please tell me if anything wasn't helpful um, or if I need to explain things anymore. Um, every year I do this and every time I give this training, I wanna make sure it's better and better only given this training one other time. So I'm happy to hear your feedback. And just one other mention, sorry, that I should have included earlier. 
If you are a tourism related business in Washington County, we've received some funding to provide you with um, online marketing assistance. As far as, so Jillian and Ashley, who was, um, did the branding training for us, the first training we offered this time, will be working with up to 20 tourism related businesses to look at all of your different online platforms to see you know what you've got going on what you might need to know do you have you know have you done your google for google my business um some different different bits and pieces like that so once that's finalized there will be an application process that goes out so then you it really is um going to be a great opportunity to have someone looking at all of your stuff and saying okay here's what you really need to do or here are some things that you should consider um, and also, I just wanted to tag on to that Machaya Savings Bank through their uh, COVID Response Business Resilience Grant just granted um, SCEC funds so that if a business isn't necessarily tourism related, that support will also be available for free for Washington County small businesses. Yeah, we don't have anything for businesses outside Washington County, but sorry about that. So there. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Um, like I said, I'll be sending out the survey uh, evaluation. Please fill it in because that's how Jillian knows what you need to, what you want to hear about next time. Mm -hmm. So thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye.